And for more on the future of big tobacco, we're joined by Dean Crutchfield, international brand consultant with DCA Growth Advisors. Dean, great to have you back. Let's start off with the recent development of Reynolds looking to acquire Lorillard. Uh, deal is estimated at about $25 billion. The CEO says she doesn't think regulators are going to hold it up. Mm -hmm. Do you think it will go through? I think it will go through. I mean, if you're an airline merging or a telecommunications company or a media company, then there's issues around fairness to the consumer. But that's not an issue when it comes to tobacco. They just want your customers to quit. Okay. And is this the pattern that we can see developing with big tobacco companies in general? Do you see more consolidation in the space? I do believe there'll be more consolidation, but you're also looking at rationalization or de of, of a lot of those brands. So for instance, Newport's are menthol and the flavored cigarettes are under a lot of pressure to be disbanded from the market. So there's gonna be a lot of change happening that way, but consolidation is for shareholder value. How do we reduce our overhead and generate more revenue and more margin? It's a simple mathematics. Well, one of the saviors, the new frontier was supposed to to be e-cigarettes, mm. it was a lot of interest because it wasn't subject to as much regulation. People were allowed to smoke indoors for starters. That was a big positive. There was no such thing as uh, the harmful passive smoking, or at least studies indicated that it was less so than regular smoking. And there was less regulation with regards to marketing and advertising. That does seem to be changing now mm. as uh, governments are now catching up mm. to this development. Are e-cigarettes still going to be the big savior of big tobacco? I don't think they're the big savior. I think they're a, a very big extension of their business and their franchise, absolutely. I think if you look at Europe, they've already decided, all member states, that they want to heavily regulate e-cigarettes. And the FDA in America is yet to rule on that, but they tend to follow Europe, uh, European uh, legal re regulations when it comes to uh, uh, medicine and uh, regulations involving that category. So you don't think that e-cigarettes are going to take over the regular cigarette market? Well, they say, you know, there are analysts that say within the next 10 years, e-cigarettes could be bigger than tobacco. But at the moment, they're about $2 billion and they're increasing. But the category for tobacco in America is $35 billion, And it's declining, but it's still a $35 billion market. Well, one of the more interesting developments is that of marijuana. Mm. As marijuana becomes legalized at an increasing rate in more and more states in the U.S., and perhaps the trend can follow elsewhere, some analysts are suggesting that perhaps this is the opportunity for big tobacco to come in. They have the expertise. They have the know-how. Do you see big tobacco companies repositioning themselves to become mainstream marijuana makers, marketers, distributors? They'd be mad not looking at it. It's a huge opportunity. It's estimated there's about the same number of smokers of marijuana in the world than there are tobacco smokers. So it's huge, about 1.3 billion people. So it's a, clearly a large market that has no consolidated players in it. And so it's a massive opportunity for tobacco companies, because as you say, they know how to source, how to manufacture, how to distribute, how to market and handle regulations. So it's an, a, an obvious opportunity for them. Have any of them made any forays into that space yet? Well, interesting, actually, in the 60s, they did when there was thought that marijuana would be legalized and a lot of the tobacco companies at that time were rumored to be looking at how to own the brands in that category so it's not something they haven't done before they're fully prepared for it and they're fully aware of it so well, well speaking of uh, regulations we saw Richard Bestick report that in the UK there's been a big issue with uh, Philip Morris now threatening to sue the British government over this imposition of plain packaging how likely is that lawsuit going to succeed? I can't see it succeeding. It's happening in Australia. It happened in Thailand years ago. So there's many markets already that are actually using this harsh regulation over packaging. So I can't really see it having, have, you know, having actually a, a real result in getting there. I, I just think it's going to be blown away. Well, Dean, you're a brand expert. Yes. So what does this mean for a cigarette company if it can't even display its logo, its name, its icons on the packaging? How much of a blow is that? Well, it is a big blow because ultimately it's that retail point you know, of purchase that's absolutely key in terms of the cigarettes being sold. And that's going to change dramatically. But let's remember that this is an industry that's come under a lot of restrictions, a lot of regulations, and it's still able to ply its trade. So there's lots of other ways of doing things, but it is no doubt a big negative in terms of their business. Well, the industry is trying to transform. As you've mentioned before, marijuana could be a possible way, e-cigarettes. Another very interesting development we had recently, and a complete uh, segue surprise, was that with regards to the Ebola drug, with Reynolds Tobacco being involved in the manufacture of and the development of the ZMAP. 
uh, antibody cocktail right. that's being used to treat Ebola. Right. How does this play into everything? I, I think it's, it's growth through diversification. Uh, there are um, benefits in nicotine, or so they're claimed, but because it's associated with tobacco, not very much research has been done in it. But there are claims that it does have medical benefits, including, of course, treating Ebola. So it's very interesting that there's a tobacco company looking to diversify its operations in that realm. So it's clearly an extension of their trade. But let's, let's be honest, like e-cigarettes, like mm -hmm. treatments with nicotine, it's a nicotine delivery system. And that's something tobacco obviously uh, you know, uh, uh, rallies on. So they're all uh, basically e-cigarettes, uh, drugs with nicotine are nicotine delivery systems. So it's very natural to their business. And yet while sales have declined in some markets and another, cigarettes are still being sold around the world. Mm -hmm. So can big tobacco companies ever rebrand themselves in a way that they're not viewed in such a negative light? Well, facts are stubborn things, and the facts surrounding tobacco are extremely negative. So them changing those is going to be very hard to do. But if they're looking at opportunities... But does it even matter if they do or they don't? Um, it, it does matter because you're looking at a category, the, the smoke, the tobacco category in the world is over $700 billion. It's a monster. So you're not going to walk away from that, even if it's declining. It's huge. Okay, and it doesn't matter if they do or they don't. My point is because people are still going to carry on buying it, do you think? I still believe people are going to smoke. You know, I mean, they always say in the trade it's 20% of the population smoke. It has been like that for quite some time. So there's always going to be an assumed number that's actually a very profitable number of smokers. So it's unlikely to fade away. And obviously, if they do fade away, they hope they're going to be pay picking up e-cigarettes instead of their tobacco products. Or perhaps even marijuana. Or even marijuana, All indeed. Right. We'll be watching that. As always, great to have you on the show. Thank Dean you, Crutchfield. International Brand Consultant with DCA Growth Advisors.